Bamaquinney Outdoor Radio is presented to you by anglerschoice.ca. The Angler's Choice in handmade soft plastics. Also sponsored in part by Handlebars Musky Lures, Zing the Bling, Frantic Big Game Baits, Case Trophy Fishing, Fish NV, Catch It. You're listening to Ben McQuinney Outdoor Radio. All right, folks, welcome to Ben McQuinney Outdoor Radio. My special guest this evening is none other than the musky hunter himself, Jim Sarek. Jim, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ben. How are you? Good, good. Uh, I want to uh, keep with the, the timeline here. I know musky fishing is around the corner for us here in Canada, and uh, I figured who, who else uh, better to ask uh, these questions to than you. So uh, I, wa- I want to discuss some of the simple fundamentals for new muskie anglers. And uh, we should, I think we uh, should start off with what kind of line should we be using? You know, I think, I think to keep it really, really simple, and, and what I tell people is, you know, use a 100-pound power pro, just a 100-pound braid. And people think, well, why do you need a 100-pound braid? You're not catching 100-pound muskies. But a 100-pound braided line has the line diameter of, like, 20-pound monofilament. So if you use that, you have the shock strength and the abrasion resistance. And when you're throwing the big lures, if you get a backlash or you get tangled up in cover with the fish or whatever, you have the power and, you know, the strength you need in the line to fight the fish and make sure you don't break off any bait. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, what For for knots, what uh, what's the best knot for tying on uh uh, leaders, or do you suggest tying straight to the lure? Um, you want to do. You want to tie a knot to the. Um, you want to tie a knot to the. Uh, you know, to the leader. Obviously, you want to use. And, and there's a couple knots. I use a knot called a power knot, um, which is kind of a unique knot. It's, it's a knot. It's kind of a combination of a improved clinch and a uh, a palomar. But, um, and it's difficult to explain, you know, over the radio, yeah, but, but certainly if you go to muskiehunter.com, you can see it. But a Palomar knot is an excellent knot to, uh, to try and to use with braid. Okay. Excellent. Uh, what are some of the key structures, uh, we should look for that musky quote unquote typically, uh, reside in? Well, early in the season, uh, for those who are going to start out, you know, in the early season Canada thing, what you're going to find is the key thing is the spawning area and find those spawning areas. And no matter if you're fishing a lake, a river, or wherever it may be, you want to find those spawning areas. And a lot of those are shallower bays. Um, some of the bays are, have got, weed, you know, shallow weeds in them or fallen trees. Some of the bays are uh, clear waters. It may be kind of a little bit of sand in there, but, um, so, you, so what you want to look for are some of the, some of the shallow protected bays that uh, early on that have some of the newly emergent weed growth uh, and some of the, the points adjacent to those bays, those are going to be key. And as the season progresses, you know, a little bit, it may be that, you know, once the water warms up and the fish get done spawning and, and the water gets, you know, above 65 degrees and you know, around 65 degrees, you know, those muskies are going to set up in the summer kind of a home range. And they mm-hmm. might they might relate to, an island, you know, with weeds on it and rocks, and they also may do that, and are an adjacent rock hump. So they may have two or three areas they use. Kind of they set up what they call a summer home range. Mm-hmm. They may move around between spot to spot to spot and kind of stay with that, that area throughout the summer. But that's typically the areas that I would tell people to focus on. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> trolling versus casting, What is what would you say the, the hookup percentage is? Well, you know, I think it, it it can go. The percentages are probably the same, believe it or not, of casting versus trolling, mm-hmm. as far as hooking them up. You know, as, as far as which one is better, leave it up me. to the angler, right? Eh? It really it really all them all depends upon the spot you're fishing. Really, really large spots typically dictate trolling is a better option. You know, those that are maybe. Uh, you know, they're, they're really, really large, a big giant long weed bed or a weed flat. It may be best to troll that area and find little points or turns and then from there go and cast those specific spots. If you've got a smaller rock hump or a smaller weed bed, maybe a weed bed that's just along the side of an island or a little rock projection coming off the side of an island or even a submerged reef, 
those are spots I'm more likely to cast. Excellent. All right. Um, how important is the figure eight when musky fishing? I see uh, several times uh, on your show and as well with, with uh, my other friends who musky fish, uh, they talk about this figure eight and they swear by it. I mean, it's absolutely true. I mean, if you're not figure eighting, you're making a mistake. I catch probably 20 to 25 percent of my muskies throughout the whole year on a figure eight. And there's some bodies of water I fish where I may go on a trip and I catch more than half of them on a figure eight. For example, if I go to Lake of the Woods in the summer, it's just a lake where the, the fish tend to bite a lot on a figure eight. And I catch, if I go during a week, I'm going to catch more than half of them on a figure eight at Lake of the Woods, and, you know, and and that's just the way it is in some areas. But a lot of times fish follow, and 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 you, you, if you do a really good figure eight, you can catch them. Sometimes you know, there's fish that follow you don't see, and you do the figure eight. They come in late, and they bite right in the last second. So I'm a huge proponent of it. I do it every single cast with every lure, and uh, and and I've caught giant fish doing it. I think if you're not figure eighting, you really could be missing out on again at, at least twenty percent of the muskies that you catch. Wow. <laughs> well, that's. It's definitely a good tip. I'll uh, remember that when I go out uh, this year. Always figure eight. All right. What um, <clears throat> lures? There's tons of lures. There's there's uh, wooden lures, subsurface lures, diving lures, top water lures. For for you, what is what has been a consistent um, lure that's that's uh, been consistent for you for hookups? You know, Ben, there's this, you know, it, it's, they're all tools, you know. Yeah. I mean, I've got, in my boat, I probably have 350 musky lures at any one time in my boat, which is, a, you know, a crazy amount of baits. And, and I'm certainly not using 350, but they're all tools. I mean, I have, you know, I catch them if they're on, you know, I always make sure I've got one rod rigged with, let's say, a cowgirl, which is a double 10 bladed inline spinner. You know, I've got a, probably a top raider, which is a top water bait on another. I, I've got a, you know, phantom jerk bait on another, uh, you know, a big shallow raider, you know, minnow bait on another one, a depth raider on another one, uh, and even have another rod rig with a big giant bulldog, you know, soft plastic. And they all cover de- different depth ranges, and they're designed for fish and cover. And so the first thing I think about when I'm fishing is, okay, how deep is the cover that I'm fishing? And is, are the weeds, for example, let's say you're fishing weeds, are they close to the surface or are they not? And that can let me know which lures I can use because some of the lures obviously can't run in real deep water. So I, I base it on that. And then secondly, you know, when I start fishing, I usually try to fish a little bit faster at first to see mm-hmm. if I can either get an aggressive fish to bite or if he doesn't bite, I just locate him, get him to follow, and I know he's there. And I'll come back and switch with a more slow-moving lure. So, you know... I can't tell you, hey, this is my favorite lure or not. If you, if you watch the show, certainly I use a lot of different baits, and they're all tools. And, uh, uh, you know, I just don't have a one favorite bait that I fish with or <laughs> I go to all the time. I, use, yeah. I really honestly do use a lot of different ones. And, you know, I may start out throwing a bucktail like a cowgirl, but throughout the day, you know, it, inevitably I might catch them on a different bait. Could be a shallow raider, could be a bulldog, could be a phantom glider, anything like that. And it just depends on the type of cover and then kind of the attitude of the fish. Yeah, I, that's, that, that is uh, absolutely true. Um, the variety of, of baits uh, is key, I think, uh, and having your, your setups uh, ready to go uh, in a casting situation or even in a trolling situation is key to a uh, better success rate for sure. Absolutely. Um. I know. Th- I notice you've been uh, fishing some Canadian waters uh, lately. Do you have a favorite so far? You know, I've been fishing Canada for years. I mean, I've always spent you know three to four weeks a year fishing Canadian waters, and and uh, you know, I, I have a lot of favorites. I mean, I certainly love fishing Lake of the Woods. I love fishing the Ottawa River. Um, I, I've really enjoyed the last few years fishing the Canadian side of Lake Saint Clair. Uh, you know, there's just a lot of options, you know, and they're all different. You know, those three fisheries, I, I like them all, and they're all three are, are radically different in how you fish them and, and, and how they're set up. Excellent. Weather and moon phases, I hear you talk a lot about those. And for new anglers, um, th- this is something they they need to research and and sharpen up on, correct? Yeah, I, mean, I, I would tell people, 
I say the most important thing on any fishing trip is going to be the weather. You know, and it, and it's the same way whether you're fishing for muskies or bass or crappies or walleyes. You know, if if you've got stable weather that's warm, maybe you get a little storm come through and it gets overcast and cloudy and maybe a little rain, southwest, west winds, that's great weather for any fishing, right? Mm-hmm. And But if all of a sudden that storm comes through and then conditions change where the wind is now out of the north, and and it's a bluebird sky, and you have no humidity, and you have what's called a post-frontal condition or a high-pressure system over the area. Mm-hmm. I don't care what species you fish for, fishing becomes much, much tougher. And mm-hmm. so there's not too much you can do about it. It's just the weather. Um, so, you know, you know, I, I think that when you get a front coming in, it's overcast. I fish faster, and I think the fish should be biting, and that's great. Now, regarding the moon, you know, I, I tell people, I go, generally, you know, the biggest muskies are caught three days before or after the full moon or the new moon. And and so if you're going to plan a trip and you know what, may, what time you might be going, let's say it's July, for example, and, you know, if you can make it around the full moon or new moon, great. But, you know, we all have jobs. We've got family commitments, yeah. other things. If not, don't worry about, oh, I can't make the full moon or the new moon. Go when you can, and you just hope the weather's right. Because even though you're fishing around a full moon or a new moon, if you get that high-pressure post funnel condition, the moon's not going to help you. It, re- it really, really won't, it, it, because the weather is going to trump the moon. Um, one last thing I can tell you, Ben, is that I pay close attention to moonrise and moon set every mm-hmm. single day. It's one of the first things I do when I get my boat, turn on my Lowrance. What time is the moon going to set, or what time is the moon going to rise? And if I'm fishing during the day, and uh, let's say the moon's going to set at 4 in the afternoon, if I see a big muskie somewhere in the morning, at the moon's going to set at 4 in the afternoon at 3.45. I am going to go on that spot where that fish was and right before the moon sets. And a lot of times, you know, I'll, I'll get that fish to follow or bite. Amazing. Excellent. Well, folks, my special guest this evening has been the muskie hunter, Jim Sarek. You can catch him on The Muskie Hunter on WFN, the World Fishing Network, on Channel 426, Rogers Cable. Jim, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. You are a plethora of knowledge when it comes to muskie. Anytime. Feel free to give me a call. Let's talk. All right. Great. Folks, let's uh, stick around, and we'll have more uh, muskie talk right after this. Ben McQuinney Outdoor Radio is presented to you by anglerschoice.ca. The Angler's Choice in Handmade Soft Plastics. Also sponsored in part by Handlebars Musky Lures, Zing the Bling, Frantic Big Game Baits, Keith's Trophy Fishing, Fish NV, Catch It. You're listening to Ben McQuinney Outdoor Radio. Shit. All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, my next guest is uh, a Lake of the Woods guide and. Uh, owner and founder of Keith's Trophy Guide Service. On the line with me this evening is none other than my good buddy Keith Davison. Keith, how are you doing tonight? Doing good. Good. So, How's the Ottawa Senators doing? Up 2-1. Up 2-1, there you go. <laughs> That's always good. <laughs> well, Keith, um, <clears throat> you're, a, you're a musky angler, and anybody that knows you knows that you're a musky angler. Uh, what are uh, what are some of the the fundamentals that you can tell new musky anglers uh, that they should be uh, focusing on when when going for musky? Uh, let's talk about line, for instance. Well, uh, for me, I use Power Pro. I've for probably fifteen years now. Uh, I really just think that. Uh, Best line out there is the 100 pounds of muskies casting uh, for trolling. Just because of the all these custom bait makers we have in Canada, yeah, uh, you know, a lot of big bait. Been using 200 pounds just as almost an insurance to uh, cover the, you know, the, the, cover my uh, lures. Yeah, well, you know, when you're spending upwards to 50, 75, 125, you know. Uh, per lure, it gets uh, it, it gets a little hairy, and you just don't want those things to end up in the bottom of the lake. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, what kind of rods uh, typically are used when, when musky fishing? Pardon me? What kind of rods do you, do you use or require uh, to use when, when musky fishing? Um, I've been using my St. Croix now probably five years from now for casting. I pretty much just stick to St. Croix for casting. Um, but this year and last year I switched over for trolling to a new company called Customax, uh, real nice company. The owner there is a real good guy, has treated me well, so, you know, hard to, uh, hard to complain about them. They're pretty much unbreakable, so, well, that's, handle the 200-pound the two test, they handle it, so, that's what you need hard to say anything bad about them. <laughs> yeah, that's what you need when you're hauling in 50-plus-inch uh, 50, 50, uh, inch fish. And uh, you have you have quite the uh, legacy of uh, the fifty inch fish, don't you? I've got a few. <laughs> uh, for for uh, Lake of the Woods, anybody interested in going up to Lake of the Woods? There there is um, there is some really uh, strange structure up there. Is that true? Mm-hmm. A lot of rocky points and and islands and whatnot. And uh, what what are some of the key structure points that you focus on when you're when you're up there guiding for muskie? Well, um, well, Lake of the Woods has a lot of shallow, west facing, sandy bays. That's going to be where I st- I start my fishing, and I work out from there. The rocky points, the sh- shoals, um, cabbage is a real big thing there. Um, you find cabbage, you're usually going to find muskies so it's really the big thing with the west facing sandy bays is the cabbage right uh-huh. so uh, we get the last light in there it's warmer later the weeds hold the heat you know yeah all that good stuff yeah yeah excellent but you you fished with me on for muskies on uh what was it Moon River Basin, wasn't it? Yeah. On Georgian Bay, is that yeah. where we fished? Yeah, and that's that's was That was a that was a different. The structure looks very similar to Lake of the Woods there, uh-huh. but it's a deeper structure there. You don't have those shallow west facing sandy bays and stuff, but the structure all looks the same with that with, but it has a lot more depth. Yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> I I just. I'm waiting for the day to to pull one of these giants up from the the abyss, as it were, because uh, boat side strikes uh, probably are the most fantastic thing that that a musky angler or a new musky angler can uh, can witness. I think it uh, has part and partial to do with the figure eight. Would you agree? Hundred percent. Yeah. Um, most guys that I know, they're into musky fishing. Um, you know, a little bit or whatever to start with. But as soon as you get that fish to follow in the eight, and the worst part is, is when they don't take it, mm-hmm. that's when you get hooked. When they take it in the eight, it's exciting and everything, but it's not what plants that seed in your head, I don't think, for, you know, making it just need to be out there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an affliction. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> uh oh, why? Well, I, I, when, <laughs> when I get my musky, that'll be it. Uh, the the wife will be yep. the, mu- the musky widow. Yep, yep. There's a few of those around, man. Now I've seen your tackle box, and I gotta tell you, it is absurd the amount of lures that you have for musky fishing, but. Um, as we all know, there's a rod for every fish, and there's a lure for every fish, and big lures catch big fish. Uh, let's uh, let's talk about the uh, the new series of uh, frantic baits that you're going to be taking up to the Lake of the Woods. Oh, I don't know if I want to tell everybody about them, but <laughs> all right. Um, there's he's got a popper out it's called the Papa Dog, and uh, did you know I worked with him on that? for two years before it was really made available to anybody else. Mm-hmm. I was just kind of getting them to make them for me. And uh, I've done so well on them that it just made sense to, you know, start using them for, or start selling them for them. 
and uh yeah we we've done a little bit different uh design um i wanted to imitate a dying fish a little better than just the popper itself mm-hmm. so we've taken the eyes and put them on the bottom instead of the top uh so that the it looks like a fish on its back yeah belly's up belly up yeah belly is up you know um with these new ones too they come with a real nice tight tail mm-hmm. uh nice feather tail so no they're gonna be i think they're just that one step above the older ones they come with a full wire through uh wire through harness or whatever you want to call it no you can't you can't beat that and he hand carves them hand paints them does everything by hand and no one else no one else really does that by hand anymore so it really gives you just that personalized feel to it yeah absolutely absolutely they are they are uh, priceless uh, work of art and any of uh, my listeners that are interested in uh, hand carved uh, musky lures you can check out frantic big game baits on facebook and uh, Keith uh, definitely swears by them, uh, especially the uh, subsurface baits. And at the Odyssey, uh, uh, Gord Pizer uh, actually uh, was uh, quite uh, taken aback by by uh, Frantic's top waters. Mm-hmm. He was very impressed with those. Um, uh, w- so, would you say what would you say your highest producing lure is um, for just straight up numbers like if we were going out on a numbers day uh and you knew where the fish were what would you be throwing to it's really hard to beat a bucktail in yeah. any situation um you get a cowgirl or uh handlebars makes a real good bucktail um like or even an old or maps, double eight? you know the, the old single bladed okay yeah everybody yeah. seems to have forgot about those but they still they still work if not better now than they used to because everybody's now throwing the double cowgirls or even bigger you know yeah so it's just they're a little uh little different gives the fish another option and with with, uh with casting uh the rod especially you're going to want something uh heavy to extra heavy correct uh yeah most of my stuff's heavy uh to extra heavy yeah Mm. and um bulldogs uh, I used the uh, bulldog rod. I think it's a double or triple X X heavy. Wow! Yeah, it's a pretty heavy duty rod. <laughs> yeah, you can't can't really uh, complain about them for being weak. <laughs> yeah. And Saint Croix makes probably the toughest rods out there. Like I've not had I've had one eye problem on in six years. I've had one eye problem with all the guiding I do and fishing and everything so you know that's not bad to have just one eye let go on you. yeah that's I have i you've seen the stack of rods i have in the corner there's probably a good 20 or 30 rods yeah i'm waiting for you to like say oh i'm done with this one <laughs> you might be waiting a while i think so <laughs> now um weather and moon phases i know uh, being up on Lake of the Woods, uh, weather uh, is absolutely unpredictable uh, at times. Some days. Some uh, well, days. We don't. A big problem is on Lake of the Woods is there's no cities right around where I am at the uh-huh. lodge I work at. There's no cities around me, so I'm not getting a real good weather, you know, report. What I kind of do is I look at Kenora and I look at International Falls and I go, well in between there maybe somewhere you know yeah and you just kind of got to guess at it but the moon phases like you can just push a a couple buttons on the gps and up it pops and you know within minutes yeah so that's the best way to do it in my opinion um i definitely do the joe booker moon secrets out of jim sarek's magazine there Uh of musky hunter magazine uh it really is you know a go-to thing for me to trust them you know they're really good and you're going to be having an ad run in the musky hunter is that correct yeah so it's for keith's trophy fishing guide service yeah so all uh you musky hunter uh magazine subscribers you'll be able to uh find keith's uh guide service information uh in the 
in the classified section of the Muskie Hunter. Uh, it's coming up. Um, uh, it'll be run in uh, with our good friend Charles Weiss. It'll yep. be run with his article. It'll be. Uh, it won't be in the back. I spent a little more money to get a nice. Oh, one. there you go. Perfect. Perfect yeah. then. Yeah. Uh, Canadian waters. You're a Canadian boy. What so far has been your favorite uh, place to to hunt down the big fish? Ah, uh, oh. is it a toss-up? Toss up. It's a toss-up between Lake of the Woods and Lake Saint Clair. I love fishing Lake of the Woods because I got all that structure. Everything's there for me, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but Lake Saint Clair is a big bowl. There's no structure. There's fish everywhere. Yeah. You know, um, the fish population is definitely better there, or more, maybe it's not better, just more catchable there mm -hmm. than it is on Lake of the Woods. Um, you know, and it's a lot of, the thing for me on St. Clair is 99% of the guys that are out there trolling, and I'm casting. So I'm giving the fish a total different look of the lure. Mm -hmm. You know, a new presentation to them, and um, I think average per fish, Wise, we probably catch more big fish casting per, per you know like for effort than a troller does. Now the trollers will get a lot of those forty to forty four inch fish, mm -hmm. and I really really don't see a lot of those honestly. Like uh, when me and my brothers went out in the fall, we went six days straight with a fifty inch fish. Wow, that's oh, pretty tough to beat. Yeah. That's that's a good yep. hookup ratio for sure, and and also casting versus trolling. When you're casting a lure, you can set the cadence of that retrieve. Whereas when you're trolling a lure, uh, there's no set cadence. It comes in no. as you're trolling at that speed you're trolling at. You yep. can't make um, it do anything else. You can try do some little mini turns and S snake and stuff like that. So you get some speed up and some pause, but really you're not gonna, you're not doing anything drastically different, you know? Yeah, you're not, you're not inducing the, the strike where you can, you know, kill a, uh, double eight handlebars or a double ten and, and let it kind of flutter down and then pick it up again. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Well, folks, that's all the time we have. Uh, we're gonna say goodbye to my good buddy Keith Davison from Keith's Trophy Fishing. You can find him on Facebook, and uh, where? Just uh, before I let you go, where do you guide? Where are you? Uh, you taking your trips? Well, uh, from June until October, I am on Lake of the Woods this year, and from October to quote right till the season ends, I'm going to be on Lake Saint Clair. Um, I will do side trips um, to other lakes if I'm not too busy. I fish Georgian Bay, which is giant trophy water, uh, or I can do Pigeon Lake for guys who want to learn how to musky fish, you know, without the big water yeah. effects. Mm -hmm. So um, if people want to check it out, uh, my web page is www.keithtrophyfishing.com, and you can get any information you want off there. Excellent. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Keith. It's been a pleasure. No problem. Thank you, Ben. All right. Take care. Ben McQuinney Outdoor Radio is presented to you by anglerschoice.ca. The Angler's Choice in handmade soft plastics. Also sponsored in part by Handlebars Musky Lures, Zing the Blink, Frantic Big Game Baits, Keith's Trophy Fishing, Fish NV, Catch It. You're listening to Ben McQuinney Outdoor Radio. All right, folks, welcome back to Ben McQuinney Outdoor Radio. My third and final guest, certainly uh, well known for uh, being one of Canada's uh, innovators in the Canadian sport fishing industry, Mr. Bill Fuller of Husky Musky Leaders. Bill, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ben. Now... Uh, we're talking tonight about uh, musky fishing, and uh, I was like hard pressed to uh, think of uh, who better to talk to about the importance of quality gear, terminal tackle, if you will, 
uh, well musky fishing than you. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and, and how you got started with the the leader gig, if you if you will. Yeah, it started about 10, 12 years ago uh, when I seriously got into musky fishermen and fishing. I was late into it. And uh, just trying to find lures around the Ottawa area at that time was difficult at best, but trying to find a decent quality leader was uh, almost impossible. You know, there was sort of the, the cheap... Um, uh, Canadian tire style uh, level leaders around, but that was about it. So I, I basically just got on the uh, the internet and did some research and bought some materials and did a lot of uh, experimenting and whatnot with uh, different types of materials and different methodologies for for leader building. But um, for the most part, uh, I went to the saltwater sites. Mm -hmm. These guys build leaders for catching. You know, thousand pound sharks with sharper teeth than muskies and whatnot. And I was looking yep. at what they were using, and I figured if it's good enough for sharks, it's certainly good enough for uh, muskies. And that's basically um, what I ended up doing. I was was using a lot of their uh, techniques. It's certainly not rocket science. No, no. But uh, you do uh, put out a, a quality uh, leader. Oh. Uh, tell us about some of the quality components and how it makes it. Uh, unique to Canada? Uh, well, the uh, uniqueness is, is first of all, I, I use um, I, I, what I feel are the, the best quality snaps and um, uh, swivels, and they're both made by a company uh, out of Toronto called uh, Stringies, and uh, they are without a doubt the, um, the best made. Um, I tried using, uh, in particular, different types of snaps, a cross lock, the dual locks, and they weren't holding. There was a, even a, a TV guy, um, guy down here doing a show with John Anderson a few years ago, which mm -hmm. um, lost a fish on a cross lock snap. And I said, that was it, that's enough of that. And <laughs> switched over to uh, Stringies, and I've never had a complaint since. Excellent, excellent. Now, uh, there's, there's various um, types of leaders that uh, that you make uh, one of them however is is the fluorocarbon leader and uh, we're, we're addressing new musky anglers and uh, so I just want to touch on the importance of uh, the fluorocarbon leader uh, for, for musky fishing yeah, the fluorocarbon is, is one of the uh, components I've tried mono and it, it works the same as uh, fluorocarbon but fluorocarbon is definitely better um, and it's not fluorocarbon line it's fluorocarbon uh, leader material which is a, uh, a stronger um, and more abrasion resistant material it's it's a bit harder than uh, and not as supple as uh, fluorocarbon line and so for anybody making a leader it's important to know the difference and to make sure that you're using the leader material uh, the material I use is made by a company called Andy, and uh, they're very well known in the salt water world. Uh, over 1,700 different class line records, uh, et cetera, et cetera. They're uh, they're very good, and um, I have not had any complaints about the the fluorocarbon that I've been using. The generally speaking, it's used for uh, two different uh, types of fishing. Uh, the main one is trolling, where you're using longer leaders. Uh, Three, three normally up to about six foot. Wow. And um, the major advantage of that over wire or even uh, thinner material is the fact that, especially when you're trolling, uh, if you don't pick up your rod fast enough, the muskie will start to uh, roll in the line. Mm -hmm. And if it's wired down there, it can cut them up pretty badly. Uh, even, you know, 100 pound uh, microfiber line will uh, cut a muskie. But the, the thicker leader material, uh, the fluorocarbon, because I only use 150-pound fluorocarbon. It's uh, relatively thick stuff, mm -hmm. and um, it, it won't cut the musky. It may mark up their uh, slime coat a little bit, but, I mean, uh, that comes back pretty quickly if uh, they're still in the water. So mm -hmm. there's no difficulty of that. And putting it together, um, I use something that's, most other uh, leader musky leader uh, makers don't use. I use loop protectors, mm -hmm. and these are uh, vinyl or cotton coated uh, stainless steel springs, which um, go 
over the loop, the material in the loop, and, and protect the loop from uh, wear and tear and, and this sort of thing uh, allows you to uh, use your uh, leader for a longer period of time. And, um, you know, the, the loop can be a, a very a weak spot if there's a lot of stress on it. Ab absolutely. Now, um, have you found uh, in, in that case with the uh, loop protector, um, some people have questioned uh, the visibility of it to the fish, and I I turned them down and said, well, I'm pretty sure they're more concerned about the large uh, bait presentation before them than the tiny little green spring on the leader. Would you agree? I, I would certainly agree. As far as I'm concerned, that little bit of green material looks like sort of bait fish out in front of the, the lure, which is supposed to imitate a fish mm -hmm. and uh, might even enhance it. But um, I do listen to my customers. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, um, over the period of this summer, I am switching away from green. I've got a, a new supplier, and I'm going to a sort of a chocolate color brown, which I think should keep people happier and still allow me to uh, keep the loop protectors on those uh, leaders, which I think is important. Perfect. A man who listens to the masses. Yeah, you got to listen to your customers. Yeah, that's right. Uh, any other materials that you make your leaders with? I use uh, single strand um, uh, stainless steel as well for uh, jerk bait and glide bait leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, they can be used for you know casting uh, bucktails and this sort of thing. A lot of people do use it uh, because uh, stainless steel is uh, a stainless steel leader is about a third of the cost of a. Uh, uh, fluorocarbon leader, so uh, a lot of people just prefer to do that, or they've only got maybe one casting rod, and they just don't want to keep changing leaders, so they use, a, uh, say, a jerk bait leader, which, um, I, again, uses basically the same component, but um, is uh, made out of a single, one-foot single strand of um, stainless steel. And, and what this does, especially with jerk bait and glide baits, it keeps your line uh, away from the, the hooks on the uh, the lure. Mm -hmm. But you get a, something like a glide bait in particular, and uh, when you, you finish your sort of jerk and the, the uh, lure itself is, is gliding forward, uh, it can, in fact, if you've got a um, soft leader on there, it can run up in your line and get tangled, and the jerk bait, uh, the, or, sorry, the single strand uh, uh, leader will... Um, uh, stop that from happening. It'll push the line out of the way. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, favorite body of water to fish for, for muskie? Favorite body, body of water? I would have to say, for me personally, uh, there's nothing I love more than going out by myself for an afternoon on the Madawaska Head Pond up in Iron Prior. Nice. It's a beautiful little area. The fish aren't terribly big in there, but there's uh, a good number of them in there, and it's uh, peaceful, it's quiet, and it can be very entertaining. I've had three fish days in there, so nice, no problem at all. Um, the Ottawa, you can't complain about the Ottawa. The, uh, the, the contact information for, for people to get a hold of you, um, I know there's uh, several stores in the area uh, down here in Waterloo that carry uh, your Husky Musky leaders. But if anybody were to uh, want to shop for them uh, and can't get a hold of them, where can they find your, your leaders? Uh, well, first of all, I've got a, a page on my website, which is huskymuskie.ca. And uh, there's one page there that basically uh, lists all of the, the stores that are currently carrying my leaders. Perfect. Um, and uh, on the website as well is contact for myself if, uh, you know, if some other stores want to pick them up. I'm certainly willing to uh, add more stores to the list. There's no problem that way at all. Excellent. So everybody can have a husky musky leader. Certainly. <laughs> I've got enough material to produce them for most of the musky fishermen in Canada. There you go. Well, folks, that's all the time we have for, uh, for tonight's podcast. Uh, my special guest, uh, Bill Fuller of Husky Musky Leaders, one of Canada's uh, premium uh, musky leaders. And to, personally, I think it's the best, uh, but uh, we'll let you uh, test it out and be sure to drop Bill a line uh, once you've proven it to yourself as well. 
Bill, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome, Ben. All right. Ben McQuinney Outdoor Radio is presented to you by anglerschoice.ca The Angler's Choice in Handmade Soft Plastics Also sponsored in part by Handlebars Musky Lures Zing the Bling Frantic Big Game Baits Keith's Trophy Fishing Fish NV Catch It You're listening to Ben McQuinney Outdoor Radio Hey folks, if you like what you hear on Ben McQuinney Outdoor Radio or have any suggestions or would like to be a guest, drop us a line at Outdoors at yahoo.com. Musical consideration for Ben McQuinney Outdoor Radio provided by Animal Confession. Bright Light Dark Eyes is out now. Buy it at www.animalconfession.com.